Welcome back to the Rope Access channel. This is going to be the final video in our basic pulley systems series. Let's get into it. To start off, I got some questions about the previous videos and the quizzes I did at the end. What are the answers? I, I have replied in the comments, but I'll make a dedicated video on the answers of the quizzes because they are all sort of linked together. I will tell you one thing, the one I put here on the previous video is you want to make something move quick, that's the way to do it. More on that later. Um, for now, we talked about simple pulley systems in the video you can watch here. And we talked about compound pulley systems where we put one pulley system onto another pulley system or add one mechanical advantage on another mechanical advantage. And you can watch it here as well. I will link all the videos in the description as well. We learned that if we compound the systems that they multiply, they don't add up. Now we get into the complex systems and now it gets complex. Let's start with the basic one, which was one of the quizzes. We have our load go up, we find out in our basic C rig, we find out it's too heavy. We move our change of, well, that's a nice arrow. And we move our change of direction from here, where we pull down, we take that pulley and an extra rope clamp and put it on. To explain this properly, we should get into the T method because I've been translating into that slowly. If you pay attention from the first video I released on pulley systems and now we'll get into using like the proper names as well. Let's start with me being one unit of tension, bringing one unit of tension into the system. To me, a pulley always has that in the middle. So I put in one unit of tension here. That unit of tension travels through the system, meets that pulley. But if I'm putting a one in the rope, that one travels all the way through until it meets a certain spot. So the one travels all the way through. It's on the other side of this pulley. The one travels all the way through. It's still on the other side of this pulley. The one travels all the way through. It's still on this side of the pulley and it comes into the rope clamp in here as well. That's I'm encountering a rope clamp. So that's where things start to change again. Now we can start adding all those ones up and I'll use blue for that, I think. Because if I have one and one coming together in the pulley, that means that the pulley turns into a two. Let's continue on this track, right? Because I have a pulley here as well. So in the pulley, we have a two. Let's put it in the pulley. Two. It's too small. I'll make it bigger. I have my one going into the system. Travels all the way through, all the way through, all the way through, all the way through, all the way through. I account to the rope clamp, everything changes. With the rest, we have to wait to see what happens. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already done so and hit that notification bell to always be notified of a new upload. If you want to support the channel, you can do so by following the link in the description and head over to Patreon, become a level one patron. And for every video I release and charge for, then you buy me a cup of coffee. Thank you very much. Enjoy the video. Where the tension travels through the system and encounters a pulley, we need to start adding things. And we can translate that back to what we saw in the very first video where we have our load and we go like this. Oh, I forgot the anchor point. Now it's suspended. And somewhere I mentioned, I hope I mentioned, maybe I forgot actually. This is a two to one where my input gets doubled on the load. 
But if we switch it around, we find that the input gets doubled, but on the anchor point. So if I pull with 100, this will see 200, because I have 100 here and 100 here. 100 here, 100 here, and I can lift 200 with 100. And with this I can lift 100. It's about this part. If we understand this, it travels through and it compounds, it doubles, compounds is the wrong word, it, do, it, it multiplies into the, in the pulley. So if we go back here, we'll take the blue color. In this pulley, I get these two ropes, these two units of tension pulling on that pulley or that carabiner. Stays there. Uh, same thing happens here, stays there travels up and then we come to this rope clamp. So what happens, this rope clamp pulls on that rope, but in that rope there is already a one pulling. So we can add those up in green that we get a three units of tension. If we count the green ones, one, two, three, or we have the two in there, one and two is three. Three units of tension travel, start traveling through the system. So that comes out on the other side of the rope as well. It goes down, we meet a rope clamp. What happens then? It stops and after the rope clamp, everything changes again. What we saw here is we add the green ones or what is in the pulley and, and meets, but let's add the green ones. We have three, one and one. So right here, we have a five pulling. If we go from five to one, we have a five to one mechanical advantage. I've used it more often than I would have thought in the beginning when I started talking about this whole story because it's very easy to move that change of direction I'm pulling down, add a rope clamp, prusik or whatever onto the rope and I'm still pulling down The change of direction stays the same. I'm not multiplying my mechanical advantage but I'm making it a little bit lighter. For short pulls or when you need to tension something really hard for whatever reason, you might do it, need to do it when testing stuff or when actually lifting stuff. There's a huge disadvantage to a system like this. It's a 5 to 1. If I prepare properly and I know I need a 5 to 1, I should just use double pulleys and keep it as a simple pulley system. The disadvantage is that the, these, when this one goes up at uh, three times the speed of the load, or uh, three times the speed of my input, and this one goes down at two times the speed of my input. They meet really fast in the middle, so I get a lot of resets. So it's good for giving that one little extra tug, but in a practical world, when you need to do a lot of racing, races or a long race with this, it's not very practical. Good to know, but we call this complex. You can already see at the, uh, uh, the way to calculate this, it's a complex system. There's also the collapse rate and I'm really bad at explaining collapse rate. I, I grasp the principles behind it, but there is, I'll mention it down below. Who does it really? Rob something. I forgot his name. I saw it a long time ago. A really good short video about collapse rates. Complex pulley system. Now we see this, we can do a lot of different other stuff and that's all theoretical. If you want me to make a video giving you a lot of quizzes uh, with these things, I will. I, we can do it on Instagram as well. It's all theoretical. In the end, most basic stuff, most rescue teams, most lifting I do, it's with the basic Z rig. We start at an odd number, not an even number. We start at an odd number and add something on it. It's either a 3 to 1 or a 5 to 1. Sometimes in training we get crazy scenarios, but in real life, three to one, five to one. That's all, that's all usually it. Some really cool news. While I was editing this and making the V-Rigger files to support what I was drawing in the video, I thought maybe I can use all the reach I have been gaining these last few months and do something for you guys, all my subscribers and followers. So here's the story. I have been using V-Rigger since about 2015 and I like it a lot. In the past, I did have some problems with it and Steve at VRigger was quick to respond to my emails and work on a solution. And that's the thing that I value a lot. Customer care is important and something that is 
lacking these days in a lot of companies. So with that in mind, I emailed Steve at Viberger with the question if we could work on some kind of discount deal. And he was up for that. So if you don't know about VRigger, let me tell you about it. With VRigger software, you can create any virtual rigging setup or image you want. You can export those images as JPEG, Bitmap, TIFF, PNG, and with PNG with or without a background. Then you can use them in your work method statements, your risk assessments, your, your teaching materials, presentations, websites, or like me, what I did in your video. If in the approximately 500 pieces of gear in the program, you cannot find the one you want. You can always create your own, like I did with the Align Skill, the LS3 image in this video and the video before this. A couple of the cool things that you can adjust are safety factors, weight, rope direction through the devices, friction, and efficiencies of most of the pieces. Then when your rigging is complete, you hit Calculate forces and V-Rigger does exactly that. It can even take angles into account as well and show you where you are exceeding your safety factors. So it's a great program to work out rigging situations. So if you're interested, check out V-Rigger through the link in the description or shoot me an email at connect at theropeaccesschannel.com. Make sure to have cookies enabled when you do it and mention track 10, all caps, at checkout. Check the description below for all the right link and codes and all the good stuff. All right, here's the quiz. As a grand finale, I will leave you with three more questions and let's see if you get these right. I have my load. Of course, it's 100 kilo. And this is going to be a very lightweight system. The rope goes up through a small pulley with a rope clamp back up. And we will be lifting in that way. What we need is another, that's a pulley, and this is going to be a pulley. We get another rope, or yeah, a length of rope. We attach it to this pulley or close to that anchor point or into the pulley or whatever. Same carabiner, can be anything. And it goes up and attaches here. And this is a pulley as well with a rope clamp. It's a very lightweight system. Uh, if you know where this is used and what it's called, leave it down in the comments below. I only need one, two, three pulleys, and this can actually be a carabiner as well. If you look back into the friction videos, which you can see down there and link below in the description, uh, what would be the best place for the carabiner? All right, that's system number, question number A. Question number B is, same load. I get my rope going up through a pulley progress capture device, anything efficient. There you remember we're talking in an ideal world. I get my separate system, and we're going to call this like the Harken Wingman, or a Jag, or a Aztec, or a set of fours, basically. And let's see if I can draw it out in an easy way. And I will put it on like this. We will be lifting from here. I know this is not very clear to see, but if you know a set of fours, it's rope is terminated here. These are double pulleys. I got the comment somewhere when I draw these things out. Well, why are the single pulleys? As if double pulleys don't exist. Well, here is your example. These are double pulleys, but it just looks like doodling of a kid, right? So, but I just wanted to give the example why I usually draw single pulleys out and make it a bit bigger because it's clearer to see. But a basic set of force. Rope is terminated here. It goes down through pulley, up, down, up, and this is the end, and we pull that way. All right? So what is the mechanical advantage of question B? Next one. Same system. Same devices, and I find out, well, this was a little bit too heavy, so you know what we do. We have seen this 
sort of before. We get our rope clamp, put it on, and we take this set of fours, which I will draw out as unclear as before, but a little bit clearer because I do learn a little bit. And we attach it like this. We saw it before. In one of the other videos, check the quizzes in there that I hauling in a uh, uh, with a through a change of direction, and then I just all I do is take that change of direction and a rope lamp and attach it on the rope and pulling on, and I will pull down like this, and this is a set of fours. So the red is a set of fours in these boxes. All right. So system C. What is the mechanical advantage of? That. See, I've left some space here because we will change it up one more time. Get the load, 100 again. It goes up, and now I need to think about this. Goes like so, and then we're gonna go up again like that. We get, well, this is a pulley. We get a pulley in here. It's almost the same, uh, what do you call it, same devices. And we get the, let me think, let me think, let me think, it's this one, a rope clamp here. And we get this rope clamp here, this one, this one, we get a pulley, we get a pulley, it's terminated on this end, one, two, three, four, one. Boom, in there. There we go. System number D. So the thing with these kinds of systems are, especially, there's some few more steps we can do. If you would like me to do more on these crazy scenarios, Leave it down in the comments and I'll make a dedicated quiz on the website at www.theropeaccesschannel.com. Um, so these systems, they're all fun and games. It's just to see if we understand the T method and how to calculate this. But is this practical? Well, in my opinion, it is not. Is this practical? In my opinion, it's not. But I'm from the industrial rope access world. I don't do any mountaineering, guiding, climbing, so I don't need to be very lightweight. These might be very specific situations where you could use this. So when commenting, think about what industry you are from, and maybe it doesn't apply to your industry, but maybe it applies to another industry. Because if I have to look at this, I'm like, Jesus, I would do it way different, make it a little bit easier on myself. But if you're climbing a mountain, and every little gram counts, then maybe this is a good system. And the amount of resets you need to do here outweigh... No, uh, so the advantages of having a lightweight system outweigh the number of resets you have to do in the system like this. So, just fun little things, food for thought, A, B, and C. Tell me what the mechanical advantage is, and uh, leave it down in the comments. I will see you in the next one. Stay connected.